Hello, my name is Randy Brown with Charleston Marine Consulting. This is video two of the three-part series of 15-minute videos covering the MaxSurf Advanced Suite and working with GHS geometry files. This video will focus on MaxSurf stability with a concluding demo of the MaxSurf Advanced Suite and the power of automatic updates after making changes to the hull early in the design stages. So uh, we're going to cover these stability examples in this video and then after that we will use MaxSurf Advanced to make um, some changes to a MaxSurf NURBS model and show you how it automatically updates the tanks, the hull primary structure, the detailed um, takeoff list for the, the structure, the weight report, and the load case for entering into MaxSurf stability. Now let's just dive right into MaxSurf stability. This is our same uh, GHS geometry file model of the 186 foot research vessel. Uh, it shows the, uh, the water line in a rendered view. Uh, we can look up under the hull here like this. So it's a nice handy visualization tool. I will get out of the rendering mode for a minute and we will turn on our tanks and forward is to the right. So um, what we're going to do first is run a what's called a specified condition analysis. So we'll look at a profile view and you just select from the, the options over here on the left. We'll select specified condition and to set that up it's very straightforward. We just we can specify different um, ways of going about this but let's do it this way we'll do a fixed heel a fixed trim and we'll enter in the forward and aft drafts so let's say I had a forward draft of ten and a half feet and an aft draft of eleven feet and we just enter that and we hit the run button and what we can see from the results here on the right are the, um, the displacement um, and other characteristics from hydrostatics. This kind of analysis uh, comes in handy for when you're doing a, a light ship survey. You took your freeboard measurements and uh, in this case I can have the the freeboard points entered in in the model and they would actually show up. If I go here under um, display visibility I can show the key points and see the freeboard locations so that when I look at the output from the specified condition I can see the actual simulated freeboard measurements right here for each of these locations. Another example we'll do next is a equilibrium analysis. So we'll switch over to equilibrium and I'll switch to a profile view. We'll turn off the, um, the labels that we just turned on for the uh, freeboards and down here we have our load cases. Um, so for example we've got a load case defined for shipyard arrival and showing the, uh, the various levels of the tanks. So what can come in handy for doing equilibrium uh, to really understand what your loading condition is, on the screen um, I can turn on the actual uh, load masses that's what you see here for each item that's in the load case so I, I know exactly where it is on the ship and notice I can see the locations um, in the three directions as I move my cursor around the other thing that can be helpful if I go into this view and I'll turn these off if I turn on my tank levels and shading uh, I can actually see the levels of the tanks and I can also have different colors depending on what the specific gravity of the tank is. So if I want to run this equilibrium load case I just hit the run button and I see the results here. So it's telling me what the displacement is, uh, the draft forward and aft, etc. what my GM is and all of that. The, I can send results, by the way, to I have different reporting options. 
So I can spool results to a report, which is a built-in report um, viewer, or I can send the results to Microsoft Word. So let's switch to a large angle stability analysis next. And to run that, I'm just going to switch to a uh, section view like this. I'll turn my tanks off. To set up large angle stability, I go into the analysis, pull down, I specify my range of heel angles, so we'll go from 0 degrees to 180, increments of 10, and we will specify the trim. In this case, we'll say uh, free trim to the load case that I have uh, selected. The other thing we can set up is what criteria we want to run against. And I mentioned this in the previous video. MaxSurf has a very comprehensive built-in stability criteria library that covers all of the international criteria from IMO to Australia, Canada, Japan, Coast Guard, the Navy, etc. So it's very user-friendly um, so you can expand this tree and select the specific criteria. So these are um, writing arm type criteria that are based on parent criteria that are up here. So these are the ones that I selected just for this example and you can uh, customize these um, enter in specific values and you also have um, interactive help screens that appear. So with that selected what I can do is um, I can run my large angle stability I'll just activate the graph window here so you can see it generate interactively. I'm ready to go. We'll just start the analysis. And that ran pretty quickly. Um, I see a, a table of results here for each of the angles. I can uh, put the vessel in uh, any of the heel angles I want to for cutting and pasting into a report. And also, the graph window is very easy to take um, any type of graphical output or anything in any window, for that matter, and copy and paste. So I can say Control-C and open up Microsoft Word and paste it in. And it comes in very clearly and easy to read. The other thing that can come in handy is uh, these screens are very customizable in terms of colors. So if I want to change this coloring to uh, a white background, that's very easy to do. And again, I can take this image if I want to and use copy and paste and put it into a report. So that can really make putting a custom report together uh, go very quickly. The next thing we want to do, uh, let's look at the results in the criteria results window. So this actually tells me how each criteria stacked up in this particular analysis for this load case. So each criteria is spelled out. I know whether or not it passed and I know what the actual values were uh, against the criteria and what the margin was. The next thing we can do is a uh, tank calibration example and you just select tank calibration and to set that up you would uh, bring up the sounding pipes window and enter it in enter in the calibration spacing uh, right now our units are set to feet if we change that to inches and I can enter in my uh, increments of my calibration. So in this case we set it to a quarter of an inch increments and then once that's set and you want to run your tank calibration you just uh, oh you can also specify the range of heel angles and trim for the tank calibration and when it's all set up you just hit the run button. I had run this previously so this is what the results look like and Again, with Microsoft Excel compatibility, it's very easy to take a table of results like this, hit uh, Control Shift, copy, and then switch over to Excel. 
and you can easily paste that in and customize the format however you would like. Finally, what I wanted to show is in order to run a batch analysis, it's very straightforward. Um, you just go into the analysis menu, go down to start batch analysis, and we can select various different analyses to run in a batch mode, large angle stability, equilibrium, limiting kg, um, longitudinal strength, for example, and it'll run those analyses for all of the active load cases that you have loaded in the load case window. And that would be uh, at least 10, um, I believe, more load cases. So what we're going to do next, we're going to switch over to MaxSurf Modeler. So what I want to do quickly with the remaining couple of minutes is show you uh, a good example of how powerful MaxSurf Advanced Suite is if you create the original model uh, with NURB surfaces. Um, and this could also have been created in Rhino. Um, in this case, we have the model of a trawler that was created in MaxSurf. And one of the things that was done with this model within MaxSurf was all of the primary hull structure was defined, including all of the transverse uh, frames, stringers, bulkheads. Uh, we don't show decks, but we can do decks. You can even see detail for cutouts for the stringers. Um, and in this case, it even included uh, the development of plates. So these are individual plates uh, that were uh, straked and, and developed. And I can turn off uh, these as I wish for uh, viewing purposes. So what we'll show in this example is if we make a change to this uh, hull shape, um, what kind of how it will automatically update. So in order to do that, I would unlock the hull. And in this case, if I want to resize the surface and go to a different beam. So let's say if I reduce the beam to say from 288 inches to say 275 inches, the surfaces changed. So I'll turn on the surface, but the, uh, frames are still the original frames that's why they're showing through here so in order for that to update you just simply update all the parts so what also updates is the the weight of the vessel so if i show you the weight of the vessel before we make the structural change we've got 42.75 long tons and if i make this change by just saying calculate all parts it's recalculating all the parts that are impacted by that change including what the new weight is and this can easily be exported into Microsoft I'm sorry MaxSurf stability so that's under here we would say file export um, structure parts stability load group file and then we just give that a name so uh, that's about all we have time for in this video. Um, wanted to thank everybody and encourage you to check out our third video in this series where we'll cover using MaxSurf motions and resistance using the same GHS geometry file. Thanks for watching.